All right, what's up everyone? So in this video, we're gonna have a quick look at how you can get a simple move and jump script for a 2D player. And I just have a 2D scene here and all I have is this ground sprite and this player sprite and that's it for now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag in our ground sprite here and I'll drag it down a bit. And I just wanna add a box collider 2D onto it. So if we come into here and I'm just gonna click on this to adjust it a bit. So I'll just put it below the grass. And that's all we need for our grounds here. And actually, while we're at it, we're gonna create a tag. And if you don't already have it, um, just add a tag here and create a new one and call it whatever you would like. And, but I just had mine spelled grounds. And then just apply that tag right there. So that's all we need to do for the ground sprite. Now I'm gonna drag in our player. And he's way too big, so I'm gonna adjust it to maybe a fourth of the size. And that looks pretty good. And now I'll add a box collider 2D to him as well. And I'll just adjust it with this. And I'm going quick here. Obviously you could be a lot more uh, particular about this, but uh, something like that. And the reason I don't want to put it on the very bottom is, I'll show you in a second, but it's going to help us with the jump script. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And then secondly, we just need to add a rigid body 2D and we can just leave all the default um, settings the way they are. So now I'm gonna come down into our assets window and I'm gonna right click and create a new, <clears throat> excuse me, a C-sharp script. And I'm just gonna call it something like move 2D. And then I'm gonna click on it to open it up. So then inside of here, um, we're gonna constantly wanna check if we're um, moving our player. So we're gonna say vector three and we're gonna just call it movement. And that's going to be equal to a new vector three. And for the X position, we want to say input dot get axis. And we're looking for the horizontal axis since it's the X axis. And then we want to say zero on the Y and zero on the Z. And then we can say transform dot position plus equals movement times time dot delta time times move speed and we don't have this move speed variable yet so i'm going to come up here and say public float move speed and that's going to be equal to five so what this is doing essentially is it's just creating a vector three uh, variable called movement and it's setting it equal to a new vector three and the x value is going to be our horizontal input so basically our left and right keys or a and w keys or A and D keys, I'm sorry, and then zero on the Y and zero on the Z, and then it's just constantly adding to our game object's position, so our player's position. It's adding that movement vector three, and it's multiplying time dot delta time to uh, get a constant rate in case our frame rate would go up or down, and then it's just multiplying again by <clears throat> this move speed here, and that's just so you can adjust it um, to go faster or slower, and I made it public so you can do that easily in the inspector. So if we would save this and go back inside of Unity here, and we just give it a second to think. We can actually add this move t this move 2D script to our player. So I'm going to click on them and say move 2D. And it says it doesn't exist for some reason. Okay, I just had a problem with uh, saving the file quick. But now I have it saved and I just added the script right here to our player. And if we go ahead and run it, you can see now he'll fall to the ground and we can go back and forth left and right. And that's pretty good, so that's all we'd want. And like I said, you can adjust his speed here, so if we move it to 10, he'll go twice as fast. And yeah, you can play around with that however you'd like. Okay, so now we just need to look at adding some kind of a jump feature. So we need um, some kind of check on the bottom here to see if our player is actually touching the ground, because if not, we're gonna be able to just constantly uh, jump. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna open up this script again. I had to close it because I had that error. Okay, so now that we're inside of here, I think I'm just going to call um, a new method down here, and I'll say void jump, just to make it easier to understand or to follow. And inside of here, I'm just going to say game object dot get component, and I'm looking for the rigid body 2D, and then I just want to add a force, and I'm going to say new vector 2, and for the x value, I don't want to give it any x value, and then maybe something like 5 for the y. And then I'm going to say force mode 2D dot impulse. 
And now up here, I'm going to say if input dot get button down. And the button we're looking for here is the jump button. So if we're pressing the jump button, then we're going to take this code and put it inside of this here. So if we're pressing the jump button, then we're going to take the game object, so in our case our player, and it's going to get the rigid body 2D component on the player. And it's just going to add a, a force to that with a vector 2 of 0 on the X and 5 on the Y. And then it's just going to use this force mode 2D.impulse down here. And that's just uh, the type of force that it's being added. So then you can come up inside of the update method here and say jump. And I will go back inside of Unity. So now when we run the project, our player will fall to the ground and we can still move like before. And now we can actually jump here and you see it works fine. But the only problem here is if we're in the air, we can still continue to jump. So uh, that's obviously a problem. You can just continuously jump forever. So the easiest way, uh, at least I think the easiest way to do this is we're just going to add a child to our player. So we're going to say uh, we're going to add an empty object here and just call it something like ground check. And I'm going to go into right here and just drag it to about right there. And then I want to add a box collider 2D to this ground check. And if you remember before, we didn't drag um, the player's box collider exactly to the bottom here because that's what this collider is going to be for. So I'm just going to put it right about there and make it really skinny, something like that. And expand it to about there. And that looks pretty good, so we can collapse this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a new script. And I'm going to call this one Grounded. And I'm going to open this up as well. So inside of here, we're just going to uh, need two methods. So on collision enter 2D and also on collision exit 2D. And both of them are basically going to be the same methods. It's going to be if our collision dot collider dot the tag is equal to ground. And we're going to just copy this and paste it inside of here. So if you remember before, in the very beginning of the video, I gave that tag of ground to our ground object. So whatever you gave your tag there, just make sure you spell it exactly the same here. And that'll make sure that every time you hit that ground object, we're able to do something. So I'm going to go inside of our move 2D script here and I'm going to create a public bool is grounded and I'm going to set that equal to false and I'm going to go back inside of our grounded script here. So now we need a way to actually access our player. So I'm going to just say game object player and at the very start, since our, um, our ground check is a child of our player all we need to do is say player is equal to game object dot transform dot parent dot game object and that'll just get us our uh, player so now we have our player here right at the start then we can say player dot get component and move 2d is grounded equals true so if, we're, uh, if we collide with the ground, then we're going to set is grounded to true. And then if um, we exit the ground, we're going to say player.getComponent that is grounded equal to false. So we can save that. And that's all we need for this script here. And then inside of here, um, right here where we're checking if we can jump, we're also going to say and is grounded equals true. And save that. And now we can go into Unity. And that's really all we need here. So give it a minute to think. And it looks like we have an error. So I'll just see what the problem is here. Whoops. Had to there. So we'll go back in here. And now all we need to do is just click on our ground check here. And click on or add that script called grounded. And then inside of here, you can see we have this public bool that says is grounded. And we can run it. And it should uh, be true as soon as we hit that ground. So there you go, now we can jump, and now we can't jump, and now we can jump again, and again, but now when we're in the air, we can't continuously jump. So there you go, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a like, and subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you next time.